Ads here from Herman Hits the Road. Welcome to Motorhome News, July 2021. In this video, I look at a Cala gas bottle shortage, new forest campsites could be set to close, and Applecross could be removed from the North Coast 500. Just so you know that you can find links to all the news articles in the video description and have also provided timestamps. We have lots of interesting news for you this month about different aspects of motorhoming. We'll start off with this corker from the Devon Live website, uproar as mobile mansion trapped in tiny Slapton village street. It was an hour of chaos for road users in Slapton after an enormous motorhome became stuck in one of the small village's narrow roads. One resident claimed that the driver had driven all the way from Dartmouth into Slapton, ignoring the huge yellow warning signs alerting him that the vehicle would be too big. It was totally blocking the main road for around 30 minutes and even though the driver had been so rude to the residents, they tried to help him. I've looked on Google Street View and these roads are very narrow. I didn't see any yellow and black signs, but I did see a blue width restriction sign. On the east side of the village is Slapton Sands Camping and Caravanning Club site, which I can only assume they had driven from. If this was you in Slapton, I'd like to have a chat with you and ask you about your side of the story. So please get in touch. From the Caravan Times, we have Calagas shortage as the UK turns to caravan and motorhome holidays. So you will probably be already aware that motorhomes, campervans and caravans are in high demand and are in short supply due to more people staycationing this year. But uh, they are not the only thing that are in short supply. Calagas cylinders are an essential anemone required for cooking on the caravan pitch but they're also used to fuel some barbecues. The increase in more vanners and more people hosting events in their gardens means there's an unprecedented demand for cylinders and Calagas can't keep up. It anticipated there would be a need for extra cylinders this summer and put in a large order for these to be manufactured, but the lead time on the bottles coming from abroad has led to shortages. A spokesman for Calagas said, to address this and improve cylinder availability for customers, Cala has prioritised cylinder exchange transactions for certain size cylinders, whereby cylinders are returned to Cala for filling and distribution. I think what this means is they'd rather exchange a bottle than sell to a new customer. This is great if you already own a gas bottle, but does not help anyone buying a leisure vehicle for the first time. In fact, dealerships are having trouble getting hold of cylinders to go into vehicles they're supplying to customers. Calagas is urging anyone with unused or empty cylinders to return them to the company to be refilled and improve availability for others this summer. My warning to you is this though, don't forget to collect your deposit on the bottle and for that you'll need the receipt. Does anyone actually look after their receipts? Also, there are other companies who supply gas, not just Calagas. Some sad news now from the New Milton and Limington Times website. Call to relocate new forest campsites to save future commoning. Campsites within the National Park should be shut down and relocated if the ancient practice of commoning is to survive. A leading new forest organisation has warned. In case you don't know, commoners of the new forest are people who occupy property and have certain rights to the forest which allows them to put their animals out to graze there. So the ponies, cattle and pigs you see in the new forest are wild but are owned by someone and you shouldn't pet or feed them because amongst other reasons they could be dangerous. Anyway, back to the article. The future of nine forest campsites run by Camping in the Forest under the license agreement with Forestry England was raised at a recent meeting of Verurda's Court when Charlotte Lines, chair of the Commoners Defence Association, said the time had come to move away from the open forest. Miss Lyons said to protect commoning for the future, the use of forest campsites needs to be looked at with some urgency. 
Ideally, we would like to see them restored back to this special area of conservation habitats. The Verders said that they supported the idea of relocating the Camping in the Forest run campsites, but warned that this would have to be undertaken in conjunction with providing new camping opportunities to avoid an increase in wild camping. They said, unfortunately, the general public has little appreciation of how easy it is to damage the ecosystem, and many people have little or no understanding of the behavior of large grazing animals. A way has to be found to satisfy the desire of the visitors to camp in the forest, while significantly reducing the potential for conflict with forest livestock. It is becoming increasingly clear that mixing camping with livestock is no longer practical. Amid the lockdown in 2020, the Camping in the Forest decided not to open the sites it runs and was widely criticised by local businesses and asked to reconsider by Forestry England amid fears of losing trade and campers staying illegally. The Forestry England said, When these campsites did not open last year, we saw a steep rise in wild camping across the forest, including on many highly sensitive areas for wildlife. This resulted in considerable damage caused by discarded litter and equipment, and fire risks from irresponsible barbecues. Any proposed changes to the location of these campsites would need to be carefully considered and planned. Now this is unfortunate news. As you may be aware, we love camping in the new forest at all of these campsites, so it's going to be a sad day if any of them are closed down. If it's really about litter and petting or feeding wild animals, then surely more education and information should be made available to forest visitors. I've noticed that some of the ponies have a collar. How about collars with the words do not feed or keep away? Do let us know your thoughts on the matter. Now, from one corner of the UK to the other, the Scotsman website reports North Coast 500 tourists urged to head off the beaten track. Motorists heading to the North Coast 500 this summer are being urged to slow down, head off the beaten track and spend longer exploring the area around the popular driving routes. An influx of tourists is expected on the 500 mile circuit this summer as limits remain on foreign travel due to the pandemic. While businesses are keen for the season to begin, work has been ongoing to manage potential overcrowding, congested roads and poor countryside conduct that was experienced last summer as lockdown eased. The Explore North Coast 500 campaign has now been launched to encourage people to venture deeper into the North and West Highlands in a bid to reduce pressures on the route, protect the fragile landscape, promote longer stays in the area and allow the benefit of tourist numbers to be felt across a wider range of attractions. The campaign comes amid a growing emphasis on slow tourism and the culture of bucket list and the Instagram driven visits. No mention of YouTube channels then, whew. The North Coast 500 campaign is also encouraging motorists to get out of their car and enjoy hiking and wildlife spotting. Drivers are encouraged to book ahead and move on if destinations look busy. Keeping the North Highlands free of rubbish is another key plank, never heard that one before, of the campaign, with travellers urged to be mindful of their impact on the environment. The new Explore North Coast 500 campaign leaflet can be downloaded at www.nature.scot. More news from the NC500 from the Press and Journal website community of Applecross to be asked if they want to withdraw from the NC500. So it is no surprise that Applecross is a popular stop for tourists completing the North Coast 500. But now residents of the village will be asked if they want to remain part of the trail amid concerns about its impact on the local infrastructure. Early this year, moats like ditches were dug at the village to stop motorhomes park in environmentally sensitive places and signs put up warning of dirty camping. What's dirty camping? I've not heard that term before. While many businesses in the village are supportive of the NC500 and the trade it brings in, others feel the impact on the roads and in particular on the winding Belakna Bar is starting to take its toll. The Belakna Bar boasts the steepest ascent of any road climb in the UK and is the third highest road in Scotland, rising to 2,053 feet with gradients of one in five and hairpin bends, 
it can be a challenge for any driver, but particularly motorhomes who regularly get into difficulty. A statement on Applecross Community Council page said, whilst tourism is undoubtedly a large generator of wealth and employment in the community, it also brings significant impacts in areas such as waste management, traffic volumes, littering and pollution. The NC500 has perhaps exacerbated some of these problems. The brief summer of 2020 after the surreal piece of lockdown was a brutal reminder how difficult these problems can be to solve. Did you know the tourist trail is worth more than £22 million a year to the local economy? We have a few articles from the July edition of MMM magazine, four delays to hit motorhome buyers. As a result of a global semiconductor shortage, Ford has temporarily stopped production of both the Transit Custom and the two-ton Transit for almost two months. The Transit is used as a base vehicle for both campervan and motorhome manufacturers. Shuson, who build motorhomes on the Transit, said the impact on customer orders will be kept to a minimum. Ford says that custom sold vehicle orders will be prioritised. The shutdown started on 19th of April and will continue to 13th of June. The effects on production and deliveries are expected to be reduced by an increase in production during the following months. There's been an increase in prices of anything with a microchip in it of lately. Not only are motorhomes in huge demand raising prices, but the demand in the technology that runs them is also going to raise their price. I think motorhome and campervan prices are going to go through the roof over the next 12 months. Then we also have from MMM, Renault looks to lead with hydrogen vehicles. Renault and Plug Power, a fuel cell systems and hydrogen related services provider, are to launch a joint venture in the aim of becoming the leader in hydrogen fuel cell technology for light commercial vehicles. The partnership will serve the market for fuel cell light commercials, taxis and commercial passenger vehicles. I think what's going to happen in the near future is that cars will be electric and larger vehicles will be run on hydrogen. And the reason I say that is that right now large electric vehicles just don't exist at the moment or their range is too short. We also have from MMM, Eurotunnel opens pet reception centre. Eurotunnel has opened a new space at its UK terminal for pets to be checked before travelling to France. Eurotunnel said checks have always taken place, but now, with a new facility, any pet travelling to France via Eurotunnel will undergo checks prior to the departure, and not on arrival in France. An agreement was signed on the 1st of January 2021 to allow this. New Brexit regulations mean that animals must now hold a European Union pet passport or a new animal health certificate issued by a UK approved vet within 12 days of departure. There are also rabies vaccination stipulations. Then there's also from MMM, motorhome driver training courses. The Caravan and Motorhome Club has announced a new series of driver training courses for motorhomes. The COVID Secure courses will take place at 14 locations across the UK until October. The course for motorhomes is the Motorhome Manoeuvring, cost £189, which takes less than seven hours. Subjects covered during the day include manoeuvring advice, straightforward safety checks, and understanding the law as well as manoeuvring practice. And finally from the July edition of MMM, new tyre labels introduced. A new tyre labelling system has been introduced following concerns that vehicle owners were not aware of the key differences between highest and lowest rated tyres, even after they had bought them and had them fitted. Labels were previously fixed to tyres which buyers often did not see as they were fitted in workshops directly to the vehicles from stockrooms. Now the tyre labels will be digital and retailers are required to provide the information to the customers. The labels will still show a tyre's fuel efficiency as well as its braking performance in the wet and the amount of road noise it generates. Ratings will also be reduced from 7 classifications to 5 a to E like domestic appliances. 
with E being the lowest rating. The new labels will also show if the tyre has an Alpine rating and is suitable for use on snow. This is great news, but I'm not quite sure what it means that the label will be digital. Are these ratings going to be printed on the tyre, or are the labels going to be given to you when you're given the invoice? I guess we'll find out next time we get some new tyres. I'm going to be ending this video by looking at the new motorhome from Bursner called the Lysio Gallery. Do you remember Heimer's concept camper van from a few years ago? Well, Bursner has borrowed the idea from its sister company and I really think it's going to change motorhome design forever. The Bursner Lysio Gallery is a low profile, seven meter long motorhome with what they're calling a gallery roof. It's an elevating roof with air filled walls. At the push of a button, an air compressor inflates the walls, elevating the roof in about 90 seconds. To get up to the new spacious bedroom is a set of stairs rather than a ladder, and the stairs themselves are used for storage too. Unfortunately, it has been made as a press launch prototype, but they claim that they can turn it into a product. Well, I hope they do because this could be amazing. Do let us know your thoughts on the gallery motorhome. Do you think it's a gimmick or do you think we'll see more motorhomes in camper vans with an air compressor elevating roof? Also, do let us know your thoughts and views on this month's news. I'd love to hear your comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when we release another video. Video? Video. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Just so you know, you can f just so you know that you can f mm -hmm. just so adjust. Color gas shortage in the UK turns to caravan and motorhomes. What? A leading new, a leading new, a leading, a, and they are, but they are owned by someone and you should, but they are owned by someone and you shouldn't feed pet, and you shouldn't pet, feed or fit. why do I have a problem with that? So the, so the, so the cattle, no, <laughs> campsites, but warned that this would have an, but warned this would have an under, but this, but warned that this would have to... <sighs> the Apple Cross is a popular stop for tourists competing. Not competing. <laughs> Certainly not competing. The Belakna the Bar boasts the steepest ascent of any... That <laughs> threw me off. <laughs> the Belak the Belak boasts the steepest ascent the Belak boasts the steepest ascent, ascent has perhaps exacerbated, exacerbated the NC500. Did you know the tourism trial? Uh, there's been an increase in prices in anything with a microchip. Anything with a microchip. And I can't say microchip. The partnership will serve the. The partnership will serve the. The partnership will serve the market for what? Homes and camper vans with an air compressor elevating roof. Also, <clears throat> no. Looking at a new motorhome from Bursner called the. Now I've forgotten how you pronounce that. <laughs> issued by the UK-approved vet. That's a long sentence.